So this is interesting. So this is, um, this is from the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope, uh, compliments of Dave Harvey and Chris Johnson um, in southeastern Arizona. And what you're looking at is a video of the centaur taken about six hours before impact. So if you look in the center, you see a bright dot that sort of stays the same. So they are tracking on the centaur. This is after separation. And then you see stars that are moving across. So we can use this information um, to actually track the centaur, which is very, very interesting. Uh, if we go to the next video, this is a video from the Magdalena Ridge Observatory. This is out in New Mexico. This is from Mark Bowie and um, Eileen Ryan out there. And this is a neat video, too. If you look in the center of the red circle, you can see the centaur, and then you see the nearby stars that are streaming by as the centaur actually moves across the sky towards the moon. So we'll be looking at this data um, in even more detail as well. Okay, and if we go to the next video, so in these, these are videos that were taken uh, during the time of impact um, from a several different observatories. This one is from the 3.5 meter uh, telescope at Apache Point. Uh, this video runs 15, it's sped up, 15 seconds before impact uh, through 1 minute and 45 seconds post impact. Uh, this is compliments of New Mexico State University and NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. And so you can see this is tilted, these are we haven't rotated them yet, but you can see up and down, you can see that bright ridge, and then right behind that, you see the dark part, so you know that you're looking at Cabeus Crater. Um, so we have this type of imagery. I want to show you a few other videos that we have to show you the range of scales that we have of the different uh, videos and images, um, because we purposely have done this to collect a wide range of different types of data so we can get as much information as we can. So here, for example, is another movie. Um, this is a wider field of view. This is the MMT Observatory at Mount Hopkins. Um, and so as you can see, this one is more zoomed out. And so this is a time lapse that goes on for a while. And so we can look at different scales um, throughout before, during, and after impact. And that's what we'll be doing after this. Uh, if we go to the next video. Okay, so now you can see, so this is also from the MMT Observatory, um, same place, but now you're more zoomed in. And so now you're looking at higher resolution. And so you can see the, the lighter band, and then you can see the darker part um, looking around Cabeus Crater. This is at the, the 6.5 meter guide camera uh, with no filter, and this goes um, throughout the course of the impact. And so we can look at all these different scales and try and put all these pieces together. I'm also looking at the data from the shepherding spacecraft and also the data from the orbiting assets that will be um, available probably to us later this afternoon um, once all that data is downlinked and such. So I hope I just leave you with the message that we have a tremendous amount of data that was collected through the observing campaign, uh, ground-based and space-based. Uh, the team has worked together phenomenally uh, to make sure that this happens. And um, we'll continue to work together with uh, the LCROSS science team um, and try and put the pieces together. It's going to be it's going to be exciting. And now I'll hand it over to Mike Wargo. <laughs> Thanks an awful <laughs> lot, Jen. Well, you can tell.